Ah, hello, Internet, and welcome to another episode of the Queer Chronicles of the Strixhaven Quintet here on Game Nights. I am your host and the person who almost pulled an, a vodka seltzer out of the fridge this morning instead of a Celsius. So we're starting off with that energy. Uh, You're a grown ass man. You can do whatever you want. Wait, True. I'm not going to even That's... I am not going to drink a fucking vodka seltzer at 10 a.m. I mean, I'm I've sorry. done it before. I, I feel bad. judged. I, I mean, I've, I've done it before. Limits. I look. And those I've limits are: things? if I drink that at 11 a.m., I will have to go lie down. <laughs> if you eat I'm with old. it, it's brunch. If you don't eat, then it's a problem. Then it's a problem. Uh, and we have lots of problems today that we're gonna try to solve on stream. Uh -huh. Most of them being hag related. Uh, thanks for coming to hang out with us today, everybody. I'm very excited to be here. I hope you guys are too. Uh, we have a bunch of social media and everything that you can follow and then join and hang out. We've got a Macedon, we've got a Blue Sky, we've got a YouTube channel uh, where if you like this energy, boy howdy, there's about 800 other videos of it. <laughs> So go hang out over there. Uh, you can also join our Discord and come talk about whatever we're talking about today, which I guess this morning is Dragon Ball. Um, even though I it's every morning. still have no it's fucking idea what was... I have stuff. no idea what was going on for the entire setup of the stream. So, nope. yeah, it's going to be a good one. Uh, I'm going to let my friends here introduce themselves, tell you who they are, where you can find them on the internet, and who they are playing today starting with Sid hey there uh I forgot I was first and had taken a very large drag so I just tried to roll with it uh I'm Christine Sid it works you can find me on Gotta the internet take that fat rip of that cotton <laughs> big old fat rip uh <laughs> before you introduce Gotten. yourself <laughs> so dominant that's some alpha move Sid you can find me on the internet, a Greek said. I am here Thursdays through Mondays. I don't have much else to say because that was extremely embarrassing. Uh, today, no, it was super cool. I Just am... ride it out. Okay, riding, riding, riding. I'm playing Giselle. Uh, Giselle is our tabaxi warlock slash rogue. Thank you. Cool Sid. Uh, <laughs> cool hand Sid over here. Uh, Sid. Next up is Rob. <laughs> Please hold. Oh god. <laughs> hey. I'm gonna go get that vodka seltzer out of the fridge. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> I just fucked up the wall doing this. <laughs> Comedy. Eh, that'll buff out eventually. <laughs> Look, it's 10 a.m. and I forgot the order, okay? Just leave me alone, all right? All right? I'm Rob. Or bonus stage Rob. Or bonus underscore stage underscore Rob. And I'm running for the Senate of... I don't fucking know anymore. <laughs> um, hey, what's up? It's me. Uh, I'm I'm, I, I'm funny guy on the internet. Uh, you can find me here on Saturdays, like right now, or, uh, if you're in the future watching on YouTube, uh, how's the future looking? Uh, did we win? Did win what? You'll have to find out. Um, I play TTRPG with my friends on the internet like I am right now, and when I do it, I play a character like I am right now, which is Willoughby Wanderfoot, first year. Uh, he is an Alan Paladin slash fighter slash good boy and probably has it more together than I do. I think he has it more together than all of us. Yeah. Also, I've really come around to Alan Paladin still being one of the most fun phrases in the universe to say. Alan Paladin. It's very good. Uh, next up, thank you, Rob, is Rachel. Hi, that's me. I'm Rachel. Rachel is both. Rachel is the best with a Z in the middle of an S. I play a teacher RPG theater with my friends uh, two times a week, maybe three times a week, eventually. Uh, again, um, and I'm here on Saturdays, and I'm on LB's channel on Sundays, where I'm currently running the Alien RPG. I think we're not doing that this week. I think you'll have to tune in a week from tomorrow. Um, if you want to see uh, me... And all the scary horror shit that I've written recently. Um, and today I'm playing Soraya Vale, the water genasi circle of wildfire druid. That's the one. That's what I'm playing. Yeah. 
Thanks, Rach. Uh, next up is Val. I made the same mistake. Hi, everyone. I saw uh, you do it. <laughs> I completely forgot. I, th I don't know why I thought there was a sixth member of our group uh, that was going to go before me. Um, hi, I'm Val. You can find me at the Kraken's Ground lurking around the internet. I'm here Thursday through Mondays playing and running games. You can catch me this afternoon running a game for a couple people here. Uh, playing back with uh, Dustfall Baby, uh, playing Blades in the Dark called hearts of stone uh and it, there isn't really a great way to say like we're moving into this we're ending this because it kind of just like happens and i just roll with the punches of what y'all put up with but we're doing crime just generally that's what you can expect from this group uh yeah so come join us for that at five o'clock eastern time this afternoon uh but today i will be playing la justicia who is uh the a uh wizard Fister. Thank you, Val. Uh, and finally, we have Wally. What's up, y'all? It's me, Wally, your favorite non-binary slime best friend on the internet. You can find I me- I hate all the, of you. You can find me over on the social medias at W-A-L-L-E-132. Just type it into your Google search and you'll find me. You can also find me here on GGK Shows. There's these through Mondays playing in fantastic games with all these wonderful, fantastic people. But today I am playing Damien. He's a dragon monk powered by the power of anime and dragons. Does anyone remember Delilah, the radio host? I just got that vibe right now for some reason. I don't know. I can see it. Just going to run with it. And I'm Van. I'm driving the boat. Today it's a boat. Is it a? Do you drive? You drive a boat? Do you pilot a boat? I feel like you we tell had this me, exact Captain. You do whatever you're the one want, in charge Captain. of it. Yeah, you're the one in charge. You, you, you got get your to make boating the rules. license. Fly you that rip boat. that boat across the water. Yeah, fly, go fly ride fly that boat. boat. Rip a fat boat. Oh, really? Do you boat. pilot a boat? I have What's no idea. You steer a boat. Why do I do. pilot the Ava? <laughs> it was a train we talked about last time. Ah, choo choo. Oh yeah, because I remember the whole conductor shenanigans. Mm -hmm. yeah, anyway, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 We're captain gonna... a boat, captain. Captain there it a boat. Is. That makes sense. All right, I'm the fucking captain, captain of the ship, and the SS I'll go Chuck down with it. <laughs> oh no. All right. Uh, so last time on the Queer Chronicles of the Strixhaven Quintet, you guys broke into Motherhorn, uh, made some new friends, met some fun people. Uh, and ultimately uh, discovered that, oh, I just almost said the, the wrong hag, not Scabatha, she's not the one who lives here. Uh, Endolin, Moongrave, or the Bitter End, or the Dame of Unhappy Endings, or several other things that she and people like to call her, uh, was ready for you and knew you were coming. And uh, like she is wont to do, set up a test for you as to whether or not she would deign to give you an audience. Um, you working with Stage Fright, uh, the, the sort of stage manager of the theater, uh, uh, feeding you lines from the wings, you basically improvised an entire play uh, about a horrible island covered in bones, and it went extraordinarily well and uh, you have now been brought back by Stage Fright to the performer's quarters um, where you have gained a little bit more insight on, uh, on Endelin and some of the people she is keeping here. Uh, and Stage Fright let you know that you could wait here for a while and then they would fetch you when Endelin was ready. So what would you guys like to do? Are we sneaking? I think we're we were gonna go sneak in to try and around. find her prophecy machine or something. Yeah, they find out what is the source of all of her prophecies and everything like that. Okay. Uh, so I think I gave you guys the map of this floor. I'll just repost it. So you all are currently. Uh, on 
not that one. The, uh, the stage level of Motherhorn, uh, you know there is a level below this, that's where you came in, uh, where the, the prop workshop and everything is, there is an understage. Um, right now you guys are in the performer's quarters, which is sort of at the very back of the map, so if you guys are looking at it, it's all the way to the left, it's that room with all the little bedrooms attached to it. Uh, that's where you are, uh, somewhere behind the amphitheater. Again, there are several other performers in here, um, and then in the dressing room attached to it, uh, there is your, your friendly neighborhood bugbear staring forlornly into the mirror at himself. Uh, so you guys tell me, what do you want to do? So, I've got a bunch of cardboard boxes. Just get underneath those, and we'll just start shimmying through the place. Do we all want to sneak, or, or should somebody stay here just in case stage fright comes back? I think one of us should definitely stay behind in case stage fright comes back. Okay. Um, well, if you all want to go on adventures, I mean, I'm comfortable staying here. I can, you know, if, if I need to get out in a pinch, I can just, uh, shadow, shadow warp and, and all that. So. You're probably the best to talk them, talk to them too, so. Yeah, mm. they kind of recognize you as the face too. <laughs> I am the envoy of spaghetti after midnight. Spaghetti after dark. Oh, God. Forgot about spaghetti, spaghetti after dark. I could <laughs> never forget spaghetti after dark. <laughs> the dog agrees. Yep. Sorry, they're playing back there. Okay, so Willoughby, you're gonna stay here. Yeah. Do you, can do, do you want? Do you? Can you hold this? The giant oh. moon. Oh yes. Oh, oh yeah. Whoa. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna try and balance on top of this and and come up with like a like a circus trick. Okay. Just sort of spin around on this thing. Whoa! It's much bigger than him, and he falls over. Keep working. Will do. Okay. So will be gonna stay here with your fellow mm. actors. Mm-hmm. This place needs a morale boost. Yes, yes. I must you're, do what I can. Your uh, reminder, there are several other folks in here. There are, how many? One, two, three. There's five folks in uh, in this sort of quarters area, and then you have the six, you have the bugbear down in the dressing room. Um, some of them are, they, they basically are just ignoring you right now after you spoke to uh, Elegy last time. Uh, the the tiefling who is practicing lines while talking to a skull. Um, there are a couple of people in their bunks just sort of openly weeping. Um, it's a bad energy in here. It's a bad I must vibe. Cleanse it. I don't know. It sounds like your college theater department to me. Yeah, <laughs> it was a bad vibe. Uh, I'm gonna leave Gadget and Dutch with Willoughby just in case. Okay. Oh, they can be like your understudies. <laughs> I'm going to uh, put a cloak on to Gadget and have them just sort of hover, so it looks like uh, I don't know, maybe like Giselle standing there, and then Dutch is going to uh, I don't know how to make Dutch look like anyone. Another cloak. Just put a pair of glasses on Dutch. And there you go, Damien. Willoughby <laughs> draws a pair of glasses on Dutch. Excellent. Perfect. Perfect. Cat stuffed animal, Soraya. He gets, I was going to say he gets yeah. a bottle of water, but that makes more sense. <laughs> a bottle of water. I was I really know. trying to go with a water thing. Water like, bottle with a necklace like, on it. Just like pours water on the yeah. ground. The gang's all here. <laughs> She's sleeping. Oh, look, and there's like. There's a broom with horns on it. <laughs> it just falls over. <laughs> the gang's all here. 
Yeah. Someone steps in the little tiny sip of coffee. coffee. Someone steps in the little tiny <laughs> Soraya puddle. <laughs> Stop! Stop! <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my <laughs> super dramatic about it. You guys are very special to me. I want you to know that. <laughs> um, I'm We're so going... lucky that you put up with our shit. I love it. This is my favorite TV show. <laughs> So which uh, way I'm do gonna I go? Recast borrowed knowledge on myself to do uh stealth. Okay. Uh so yeah, there there is only one way out of this room. You essentially have to go down through the dressing room and then Oh, it's east to the right. Uh out through the prop storage room where you were before. Um, so when you're out in prop storage, uh, you can either go through the curtain uh, down into the hallway that leads out into the amphitheater, um, or you can go up into that the large like central room there. How do you think we get up to that door she went through? Probably there's maybe like a set of stairs somewhere that leads up to it. I could jump up there, probably. There have to be stairs. I don't know. Let's just start walking through doors and see what happens. Yeah, that's what happened last time. We were in the other hacks place. Then I saw things. I don't think I can see. That we can't unsee. (laughs) Where do you want to go? Um... What were the two options again? Yeah. Left uh, into the central room or right up a st- down a staircase? Yeah, so if you guys are in prop storage, um, which is that like rectangular room with all the boxes in it, you mm-hmm. can essentially go up through a curtain into sort of like the large central area behind the amphitheater, uh, or you can go down uh, into one of the, uh, the backstage hallways. It would be the stage left hallway. Mm. The map is in, stage, is in the Discord now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now I see where we're at. All right. <laughs> I think, I'll, why don't we go check out the the larger room, the center room then? Yeah. Yeah. I forgot I was going to try D&D Beyond's new map thing, so I'll do that next time. Okay. Um, and yeah, your reminder, all these rooms are just separated with these like black, like thick velvet curtains. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. My screen's falling over. Speaking of velvet curtains. Um, yes, yeah, so uh you push this uh this curtain aside and kind of peek into this large central room. Uh, the, from the orientation, you are, you, you kind of get a sense of the, the general area. Um, the amphitheater would be off to your right, um, and you see sort of a big opening <clears throat> over there, uh, and you can kind of hear, you know, voices and everything coming from outside. Um, but the hall that you have walked into, uh, is essentially a large library, um, it is, it's a huge, this huge hall, it's lined with these stone bookshelves kind of all around the edges, and then there's a couple in the center as well. Um, and they house just a ton of leather-bound books. Um, there are a few people in here, you can see uh, there are a, a few armchairs sort of in the center of the room, like where you would ostensibly sit to read. Um, there are three, uh, like, slender, like, cloaked figures who are just sitting in these, these, like, overstuffed armchairs just reading. Um, and then there are a few ladders around, and you can also see three, uh, elderly, like, bespectacled goblins, um, who are sort of climbing up these ladders and fetching books for these figures that are sitting in the center of the room. would you like to do? Uh, Sarai just like wanders in. Yeah. Confidently. <clears throat> yeah, just walks into the room like they know what they're doing. Okay. 
Yeah. And then like kind of like scans around looking for any other like like if there's like one of those like directories or anything that says like balconies this way and you are out. here. Yeah. <laughs> uh n- there there is no fun uh like mall map of of Motherhorn on the wall. Be really um, handy. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> Damien and Soraya, you, you kind of wander in ahead of the group. Um the figures in the uh, the one of the goblins up on the ladder just kind of acknowledges you, nods to you. The figures in the chairs don't really seem to care that you're in here. Um that you're not necessarily like hiding from them. They just don't they don't really look up from their books. Um as you scan around, I will say it becomes clear very quickly um that basically every book on the shelves in here looks identical um they are they're spineless uh and they are sort of bound together by to a leather cover on the front and the back uh, and uh almost like a spiral notebook are kind of bound with this copper wire uh and there's thousands of them in here they all look exactly the same I wonder what these books are I'll go pick one up okay you just pick one at random yeah okay yeah you uh you pull it off the shelf again they're they're like eight inches tall about three inches wide spineless um held together with this copper wire you pull it out and the image of an hourglass is like burned into the front cover uh and you open it up and they are all like handwritten almost like journals Mm -hmm. would be um in this like uh this thin like spidery handwriting um and as you flip through uh you start to see they're uh they're organized almost like notes but there are sections um and each section has like a person's name at the top uh and a few uh essentially a few prophecies underneath a few different versions of their future oh just like flip through real quick recognize the name names nobody you recognize um but you do start to realize very quickly that none of these futures are nice or good they're all pretty terrible Hmm. well that's grim Uh, I relay that information to everyone can I see if there's seems to be because you said they all look identical it just looks like a big storehouse for these prophecies um I, I mean essentially what are you uh i was looking, looking to see if i could get any sort of sense of like where the most recent ones were put like if there is any sort of if like they're adding on to anything like either tell which ones look newer or which ones or if there's like an area that has like a a book spacer for more later and that it might be one of the ones in that show. Uh, yeah. The so the ones by the uh, the door where you came in look um, a little older, like a little more uh-huh. worn, a little dusty. And so as you go around the side and kind of up to the north side of the room, they seem to get they're more recent. Essentially, the paper is newer. Um, it's not as not as sort of weathered. Okay. Uh, I mean. I'll just tell the others. I, I think that if we want to learn more about these prophecy things, maybe we uh, look through the newer ones real quick, see if there might be any anything there that might help us. Anything with our names in it, since we're newcomers here? Do we want to take some time to try to read through some of these books and see if we find anything useful, or do we want to just see dedicate ourselves to finding out where they came from? Well, we could always ask. I mean, you know, things like that's what these goblins are doing. They kind of look like they're cataloging it. That's Maybe true. they know. I mean, if you Maybe they're the librarians. You all want to ask them while I'm trying to read through these? Yeah. You go investigate that. 
we'll go ask these librarians. Okay. Uh, you flag down one of the goblins. Uh, he uh, slit carefully, kind of comes down off the ladder and pushes his, his reading glasses up on his nose. Uh, yes, what, what can I help with? Hello. Um, is this kind of like a library for all of these books? Well, I mean, yes, that's generally what we would call a space that houses a lot of books. Oh, um, no, I mean, is it like a library that anyone can just come in and, you know, ask information about what's in these books? Oh, well, anyone that Endelin allows in, yes. Oh, all right. Um, So what exactly are these books then? Uh, they're the um, the writings of the the Dame of Unhappy Endings, as she catalogs all of her, her prophecies and uh, and saves them here. Oh, I heard she did prophecies. That's dope. Um, I was wondering though, because you know, like I said, I heard that she does all these prophecies, which is really cool. Um, is it like she just takes a nap and then she wakes up and she gets the prophecies, or is it like? Like some kind of ritual she does, or does she like spit over her shoulder and throw bones at the ground? Uh, well, she doesn't share all of the uh, the inner workings of her magic, but, uh, but no, she has many um, uh, magical and mechanical implements that uh, help with the process. Oh, it's cool! Like, can you tell me if you know about them? Uh, well, like I said, she she doesn't give away her secrets. Oh, yeah, but you've been here for, like, for what, forever or something, right? But why? What makes you say that? Oh, no, you look really knowledgeable of this place, like you know your way around the lands. Okay, well, that doesn't change the fact that she doesn't tell us her secrets. <laughs> oh, well, I figured maybe you had some kind of insider knowledge. Uh, no, um, Endelin keeps to herself. So she... <laughs> Have you read all of the prophecies? Yeah. Oh, a lot of them, yes, in my time. Are there any juicy ones? Uh, I mean, I suppose it depends on what you define as juicy. There's some very strange ones. There's, I mean, there's even some about Endelin herself. Oh. Yeah. That's oh, juicy. That is really... Ju what is the first prophecy about Endelin here? Oh, the first one? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, well, I suppose it would, you know, but it's a little famous around here because she's sort of, I think, frightened of it a little bit. But the uh, the one about the eclipse. Um, let me see if I can find it. He uh, starts going through some of the older books. Uh, pulls it out there there's clearly some kind of organizational system here because mm. he's looking through them as if he sort of knows where things are uh they all look completely identical <laughs> to you there's no numbers on the shelves there's nothing there's no spines there's no like endolin's journal volume 70 like it's just it's unfathomable um, she's been keeping journals since second grade they're just like lined up <laughs> <laughs> by year uh and he pulls one out sort of flips through it um oh yes this one if you if you want to know more about uh Endlin, her sisters this is the the one for you he hands it to you i take it and i read it uh there's i mean there's a bunch in here some of them the uh, worse than others um but there are two in here uh that probably stick out to you uh one of them is actually about scabatha um, and it reads, uh, Every morn when Scabatha rises, the first one seen by her waking eyes is, is swiftly forgotten like some fleeting swain and shan't be remembered till she sleeps again. Uh, and then later on in that one, there is another one under Endolin's own name uh, that reads, All I've wrought shall come undone when the moon blots out the sun. Does that mean that the next morning that no, yeah, Scabatha woke up, she remembered me. 
Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Um Oh yeah. Damien looks at like that the wording of it and he looks at Soraya, Giselle and in law. You know, something's interesting here. It just says when the moon blots out the sun. I mean, does it have to be the actual sun? It just says the prophecy says that her time will come undone when the moon blocks out the sun. What if we kind of play on the vagueness of it? What were you thinking? Well, you know, we just show the moon, the sun being blocked out by the moon, and it might send her into a bit of a tizzy. I'm going to remind you guys that there are several people who work for Endolin within a very oh, yeah. short <laughs> radius of uh, you. Helm of Telepathy. <laughs> there are six people in this room Can we just have that a telepathic are not you. conversation? <laughs> I'm trying to be nice here. Like, I pull... I. I, oh. I, I open up a channel to Damien. Like, Damien's in there, like, like, wanting to say something. Yeah. I'm, like, doing that mentally. Your characters would remember. Yeah. That you were yes. literally just we, talking we to a know. man who yeah. works for her, like, two minutes ago. You goobers. <laughs> Almost this entire cast is ADHD, but not all of our characters do. Yes. <laughs> trying to be nice about it. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I mean, and that's kind of what we were thinking of with creating some sort of like fake moon or uh, illusion or something. We have a fake moon. Now we just need a fake sun. It's a stab in the darkness, right? Can you make a sun? You can make a giant ball of fire. That's kind of a sun. I mean, start. that sounds sounds good to me. I mean, I need to teach all of you thieves, Kent. <laughs> For real. That's not a very positive attitude. Thieves can do a lot. Well, she puts her hood up and walks down <laughs> further into the library looking for some doors. All right. We still need to find the source of all of her prophecies, though. Did I find anything related to us? Uh, roll an investigation check. Okay. Twenty-six. Okay. Uh, you. <clears throat> uh, you don't find anything directly related to. You all, like, no mention of your names, um, but you do find a couple of entries I think that Law would find particularly interesting. Um, one of them, uh, I think, catches your eye as you flip through some of these books because it's a little bit longer than some of the other ones. Uh, it reads, uh, Time was our ally standing beside us giving us that which mummy denied us. But now I feel its hands turn cold and see its second sight unfold. The hourglass broken, the sisters three, meeting our hellish destiny. Bav and Scab will never know that time has always been our foe. And... Do you mind putting the cliff notes of that in the... Uh... It's in the Discord. Oh, thank you. I'm posting it. Uh, and as you're looking through in a book uh, a few earlier from this one, uh, there is one short one that I think catches your attention that just reads, The sweet treachery we three have wrought. Would Igwill forgive us? Huh. I think not. 
Why does that name sound familiar? Uh, because you know who that is. Is that the Tasha? Mm-hmm. Right. It's one of the aliases of Tasha. I need to know where she gets these names. Of the hideous laughter. Hmm. So, do with that information what yeah, you I, will. I rely it. I'm just trying to decipher it myself. Uh, I've put the text in the chat for you guys, so you can look at them. Uh, Giselle, you were looking for... Looking at the rest of the doors, or the way out? The way through. Yeah. Um, so there is... There's four entrances or exits total in this room. Uh, two of them have curtains. One, the one you came through from prop storage. Uh, the other one is directly across the room from that, uh, where there's another... Uh, like black velvet curtain hanging um on the eastern side of the room there is a big opening that you can see leads out into the amphitheater uh and then on the western side of the room there is uh another small opening it looks like it leads down a hallway giselle's invisible she'll check the hallway okay uh you make your way down that hallway it's, it's not super long it's maybe you know 30 40 feet uh, to one side uh, of this hallway, there is an opening, and you do see a spiral staircase that goes up. Uh, and then at the end of this hallway, uh, there is a door. A stone door that is currently shut. Detect magic. Okay. Uh, you cast detect magic. Um, it's just a door. Uh, you do sense some magic coming from the other side of the door. Uh, what kind of magic would that be? Uh, I think we'll call it ev Ooh, There's some evocation going on. Uh, there's also some like transmutation magic. Uh, coming from inside. <clears throat> is it open? Uh, it is locked. Can I pick it? You can certainly try. Uh, roll for me with Lithy's tools. 12 plus 18 is 30. Okay. Uh, yeah, it takes you a couple of seconds and you hear uh, a click the lock pops open we'll leave as is for now go back and report to the others okay uh anything else you guys are doing in this room it's, it's full of books that's it's not surprise thing <laughs> <laughs> she's just like observing the people what are they Damien doing? Did not find the comic book session, so he's <laughs> this. You know. Are there any? I guess. Uh, so you said all of these books look exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna say if if there's anything that stands out, maybe I would. She would. Cool look. shelves. Yeah, <laughs> but if it's just like if they all just look exactly the same and they all seem like they're just full of old prophecies, then. She's probably just gonna. Uh, she, she would only notice something out of place. <laughs> make me a perception check. Okay, that's. Oh, well, that's not terrible. It's a plus four. Oh, twenty-three. Okay. Uh, you sorry, kind of wandering around, just kind of looking at the shelves, see if anything sticks out, and in the center. Uh, of the room sort of tucked into uh, one of these shelves nearby the the chairs uh, you do actually see one single book that is 
different. Um, it actually has a spine. It is a little bit bigger uh, than the rest. It's a few inches thick. Um, and it is, uh, it's green. It's like a dark green instead of black. Um, you sort of go over to look at it and it's got a, a little frog stitched into the side. Uh, and it is... Oh, that would definitely catch my interest. <laughs> I thought it might. Uh, volume 3 of 11 uh, of a series called Tales from the Gloaming Court. Pull the book. Okay. Open it up. You open it up? Yeah. Uh, please make if a... If I die. <laughs> constitution saving throw. Oh, oh no. no! As you open the book, oh, uh, no. you hear what sounds like a glass being crushed as this cloud of dust comes uh, out of uh, something 17? that was tucked inside the spine of the book. 17. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, that's a success. Cool. Oh. See, this dust sort of hits you in the face, and it's awful. It's It smells like, uh, a, a, like rotting flesh. It's disgusting. Um, but you t- t- quickly sort of... Uh, clear the air as some of the dust kind of settles on the ground around you. Uh, but you're okay. Oh, gross. Oops. All right. Who did it? Still holding the book. Did what? Come on. I didn't, I didn't do anything this time. Whoever smelt it dealt it. Whoever denied it supplied it. <laughs> I'm not there, it's you! I didn't make poots, Giselle! Make poots? If I made it poot, I'd let you guys know! I'm sorry, did something happen? No. Nope. Guess not. Oops. Let's go. Glad you succeeded. It's just nothing. <laughs> yeah, same. Is there anything inside of the book, or was it just whatever I just smashed? Uh, yeah, you can, you flip it open to, uh, the first page. You do actually see, uh, written in, it's a different handwriting, uh, than is in the journals. It does say, uh, property of Scabatha Nightshade. Uh. <laughs> um, you open it up and it is, yeah, it, it sort of picks up in, uh, in the middle, because it's the third volume, um, of the, it's just these stories. Uh, they're a little dense to read um as you flip through you get the sense it's a lot of like uh court intrigue and like and things like that and just in general sort of story it's tales from the gloaming court well, whoops <laughs> shuts the book so bad. um damien is gonna go over to one of the librarians it's, um this is a re- another weird question. Oh, no. Sorry. Just shit over. <laughs> uh, but th- that's all right. You wouldn't happen to have any prophecies about dragons, do you? Ab- about dragons? Um, I mean, I know there are several in which people are killed by or eaten by dragons. Um, I, I mean, that's pretty standard fare. Uh, none well, about the dragon itself, though, I don't believe. Oh, okay. I was just wondering if you had anything about a specific dragon named Jabberwock? Oh, but about the Jabberwock. Um, no, I don't I don't believe so. I think he's a bit out of the, uh, out of the realm of, uh, of Endolin's sight. I don't know of him. I think everyone here does. Oh, well, thanks. Just you, figured I'd ask. You're very welcome. Uh, questions, questions, welcome. Okay, characters, welcome. It's a little, little bit Why I've been working on. I didn't know that's where you're gonna go. I had a feeling I was gonna welcome. get there. I don't know. I watched a lot of you say. Uh, anything else in here? I'm gonna check up on Willoughby as well. Back at the. Smash right. got to Willoughby. Willoughby. Smash got to Willoughby. What are you Talking doing? to him as a visible friends. Whoa! I'm really trying to balance on this moon here. Uh, make me an acrobatics check. Here I go. <laughs> I hope you crit. Here I, I go hope you crit. Again uh, on my own. I'm not gonna crit. Oh. Um, that's a two. 
Uh, you oh, no. fall off and like tumble forward into uh, the directly into the side of the human uh, Klee, who was in here, sort of pacing angrily back and forth, muttering lines. Uh, and they just sort of look, like fall sideways, and you kind of like tumble. You guys tumble to the ground together, and they just kind of look at you like, "What? What, what are you doing?" Oh, I'm sorry. I'm really trying to do like a like a tumbling, or or not a tumbling actually. Uh, but I'm starting to think that I need. I, I'm trying to do a balancing act. I don't know. I'm trying to keep 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 it fresh, keep it light. Right. Okay. You want if you want my advice and even if you don't i'm gonna give it to you pick something sure else. you're not good at it okay. okay ouch but yeah you're probably right no ouch is my ribs right now okay oh oh sorry sorry uh willoughby lays on hands <sighs> thank you you're welcome sorry it's that was rude it's really tense in here I, well, that's I, all right I uh pre-show jitters and all that you know more like not wanting to be imprisoned and executed, but that mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Right. So, do you do you need something? I'm gonna work on my lines. Uh, I mean, I can help you run lines if you want, but if not, that's okay. I'll I'll just um, you know, be over here not balancing on a moon. No, I, you, that that would be great, actually. All right. Start running. How lines. can I help? Uh, they hand you a, uh, a sort of rolled up script and uh, show you where to start. Oh, I should tell you which play they're in. Hold on. Where's the table? Yeah. Where's the table? Where's the table? Where's the table? Roll me a D8. Because you oh. guys did an island of death and an ocean of tears. Five. Oh, come on. Oh, if they were doing the same one. Oh, uh, yeah. Definitely help them. Uh, Klee is reading from Love Unsoiled, uh, which is a story about a maiden who is unable to find the perfect suitor uh, and chooses a bow, uh, much, much to her father's consternation, from beyond the grave. Uh, I'm, hmm. She I'm sensing a, a zombie. theme. Oh, nope. Oh, this, this went in a direction that... I didn't ex- Oh, this is interesting. Okay. Uh, anything else you want to do in here, Willoughby? Um, I think... Is there... Have I seen anybody get, like, taken away because they fucked up? Or do I get the sense that that would have happened? Um as a direct result of a performance on stage. Like, are we talking about it like a, like a Roman Coliseum situation where like, she's like, uh, uh-uh, uh, you done. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay. Is, do you know where, um, sorry, breaking character here for a second, but, um, do you know where folks go when she doesn't like a performance? Uh, I, I mean, I haven't seen it, uh, but I mean, I know there's a, there's a prison in the tower. Um, mm. I've, I haven't been there myself, thank goodness, but, um, I, uh, I don't know, somebody else might know. Okay. Uh, Elemic actually, I think was in there for, he's, he's the... The one in there sobbing hopelessly. Uh, Wait, so so they survived? Like they only spend a a little bit of time in there, and then they're given another chance? Or I mean, it it depends on the bitter end's whims. Uh, sometimes uh, people come back. Sometimes they don't. Gotcha. Huh. You can try to ask him. He's not super chatty these days. Yeah, I think I, I would probably like help Klee run lines a little bit, and then I think at some point I would try to go over to the the sobby sobby man. Okay. Uh, yeah, 
yeah, you run lines for a bit, Klee decides to take a break, and her and Elegy um, sit and just chat sort of aimlessly uh, while they're giving their brains a little bit of a break. Uh, you make your way into one of the bunks. Um, the curtain is open, uh, and yeah, there's a, uh, a human man, um, like, uh, probably early 40s. Um, he's wearing just a set of like plain kind of like blue robes uh, and has has managed to stop sobbing and is kind of sitting up in his bunk trying to get himself together. <clears throat> hey, um, mind if I sit for a bit? I don't see why not. Please. I'm, um, I'm Willoughby. Hello, Willoughby. I'm Elibic. Listen, I don't, I don't really have a plan yet, but my friends and I, well, We've kicked some serious hag butt recently, and we've helped people escape from Slackjawed Lorna and the other one, Scabatha. There we go. The other one. The other one. I couldn't remember if she had a fun nickname. Uh, Granny Nightshade. Granny Nightshade, there we go. DJ Granny Nightshade. It's all coming back to me. It's been a bit since you saw her. Yeah. We, um... Well, we're not just a improv troupe. I know. Looks are deceiving. But... We're gonna get everybody out of here. And... I just... I know everything's hopeless right now, but I really hope that you hang on a bit longer. Make a persuasion check with advantage. <laughs> oh, yeah. I already have advantage because of my helm of the best boy. Oh, shit. Uh, that's a 23. Okay. Uh, yeah, you see him. Uh, he kind of rubs his eyes a, a little bit and looking a little clearer and kind of sits up, uh, leans back against the wall a little bit. Uh, doesn't smile, but, uh, you know, doesn't look quite as grim. <laughs> Uh, and looks to you and says, Well, if nothing else, the optimism is refreshing. Yeah, that's kind of my whole thing. In that case, I suppose I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. And I'd rather be anywhere else. You know, they used to well, call me Elemic the Excellent. Oh, well, that's cool. But, um, what's, uh, what is your source of excellence then? Uh, well, after I graduated from school, top of my class, um, oh. I had a very successful enchanting business for quite a while. Oh, cool. Mm. How'd you... How'd you come to end up here? That's a long story, um, but the long and the short of it is for enchanting and other uh, magical business. You need materials and ingredients, and the stuff on Toral only stays interesting for so long. Shouldn't mm. have ventured out myself. That was foolish. 
Yeah. And, you know, obviously, if you don't want to talk about it, it, you could stop me, but... Clea had said you spent time in... imprisoned here. Um... Do you mind telling me a little bit about that? I did. Just if there's a way to help people, I want to. Uh, I want to be able to help people. Of course, uh, the there is a, a set of cells uh, higher up in the tower. Um, mm-hmm. uh, they're not particularly horrible in in any way. Uh, they, some of them even have. Decent furniture, wine, food, it's none of that. It's really just the silence. Mm-hmm. Everything here, the the curtains, the, the doors, they're meant to block out sound. Uh, which is good for theatrical performances and very bad for a wizard trapped alone in a locked room. Yeah. You start to hear things, see things. Don't know what's real. But, Endelin was feeling generous one day, so here I am with another chance. Well, not like she deserves any credit, because this is all her mess to begin with, but I'm I'm glad she at least got that right. The world needs more excellence. Indeed. So I don't know if anyone's there currently, but they're upstairs on the next floor. Um, hmm. If you're wanting to check. Yeah, I think um my friends and I are going to have to mosey on up there at some point then. Best of luck, if you do. It's a strange place. Yeah. Well, hopefully you won't be forced to perform any... Or much longer. Not anymore, because I imagine there's still going to be performances. But... Hopefully, we can sort this out today. That would be ideal, wouldn't it? Well, like I said, it's not our first hag rodeo. We beat one of them twice. Impressive. Yeah. Not that I, like, wanted to fight both of them, but it was pretty satisfying Beating Lorna a second time. We had this whole thing on a like a like a flying lily pad. It, it was it was wild. No, it wasn't a lily pad, was it? Mm-hmm. It was a rocking horse. Yeah, it was a lily pad. She has a lily pad. Scapitha has a rocking horse. That's right. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah, yeah. How they travel. It's true. Well, in any case, I hope you're right all able to leave alright you sit and talk with uh, with Elamic the Excellent for a Mm. while he seems to feel a little bit better good Uh, everyone else in the oracular library Uh, where would you guys like to go I want to follow Giselle down the spooky hallway. Yeah, I'm going to follow Giselle. <laughs> okay, you go down the hallway? Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm going with the group. Unless, <laughs> wait, do I walk down another hallway? You guys can do whatever you want. No, I'll go with the group. I'll manage. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, you all, first of all, I look at the correct level of the map. There we go. <laughs> the dungeons go from, like, a house to like an entire castle with nothing in between. 
like looking at this like Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, so you go uh, at, at Giselle uh, leading the way. You're still invisible. Yeah, you have your hood up. Uh, down, you guys see uh, off to one side that spiral staircase that goes up to another level. Uh, and you go down to the door that Giselle previously unlocked. Um, you open it, I assume. You don't all just stand here. Uh, Giselle, you open the door uh, carefully, quietly, and peek in, um, and you see a pretty horrible sight. Not again. Why do we keep opening Why do we keep Not again. opening doors and Excuse seeing me. horrible things? We the, think we'd have learned our lesson at this point. The walls of this room are adorned with wooden masks, uh, most of which look like shocked goblin faces. Dozens of masks hang neatly from hooks on the walls, uh, and several more are stowed haphazardly on the shelves of an old bookcase on one side of the room. Uh, in a far corner, there are two padlocked cages, one occupied by a panic-stricken goblin, the other empty. In the middle, of the room, two copper poles ten feet apart descend from the eight-foot ceiling. Each pole has a one-foot diameter sphere at the end of it, hanging about three feet off the floor, so two poles coming down from the ceiling uh, with these large copper spheres on the end of them. And uh, between those two rods is a struggling goblin who is currently shackled to a chair uh, so that the spheres are about level with his head. Uh, standing in the shadows, there is a tall, thin, cloaked figure, um, and you can see beneath his cowl a horrible sort of rictus grin uh, forming across the face as he pulls a lever. Uh, lightning leaps between the spheres, catching the goblin in its path, and before you can react, the goblin is gone, and a wooden mask falls to the floor. As the goblin in the cage, shrieks in terror. And there's a low sort of laugh uh, from that tall, cloaked figure as he throws the lever back up and goes to collect the mask off the ground. Oh, this guy's dead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did we interrupt? <laughs> Giselle invisibly goes up behind this guy and shanks him. Okay, uh, make me a stealth check with advantage. We're doing this. We're doing this. Looks like you have a stabby ghost problem. 29. So 19. Do you guys know you need dice for this game? Occasionally. I don't know why. I'm, there's no fucking way. Yeah, that's like, it's like an eight plus something. Uh, oh yeah, he has no idea you're there. Uh, Sweet. Yeah, go ahead and uh, make your attack roll with advantage. It's a lot of dice too. Yeah, he has no clue you're there. That is a twenty-eight to hit. That will do it. And I'm assuming I have sneak attack on this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't I don't know that he can survive this, actually. Beautiful. We'll see. Even better. We'll see. He has so many cool abilities. Four. So that's 10 plus 4 is 14. That's a 17. That's a 19. Plus 5. 24 points of damage. Okay. Uh, you have snuck up to him and you just sink this uh, this knife into his gut. Um, he doubles over uh, in, in sort of horrible pain and he looks up just now realizing that the door is slightly open um he falls to the ground still alive but only just i stab him again yeah Make a i was gone. 
pick him in this nice but yeah there we go i was gonna say yeah if you could take him out otherwise i'm gonna throw a spell he is that so is surprised. a 19. uh yep that'll do it uh, are you gonna do more than like three damage <laughs> Uh, yeah, because I'm it's a D4 plus 5, so yeah. regardless of what I roll, it yeah. will be a yeah, 6 at least. He adds 20, 27 whole hit points. Um, cool. He we're just works here. <laughs> he just works work here. He just works here. Um, just doing like it. But he yeah. laughed when that person died. Horrible. Okay? So like, well, look, just horrible. because it was, it was his die. first day, yes, but you know what? Props on him for enjoying what he loves doing. Yeah, I Listen, just mean if that you love in what that you do, like you never work a day in your life. I mean yeah. it in the way of this is not a boss a boss level encounter. This is a horrible man that works here. Um, Giselle, Ooh, you no, he's dead, uh, you pull back and sink the the knife in again, sort of sliding it between his ribs, um, and you can see the that sort of horrible grin just kind of like frozen on his face. The cowl falls back. Um, he, you don't, you don't know him, you don't recognize him, but he is a darkling, uh, a darkling elder like, um, like Charm, who you met a while ago at Scabbath's house. Um, I think it was at Scabbath's house. It was at Bavlorna's house. The ones who took you in their wonderful balloon, uh -huh. their storm balloon. Uh, so the same very tall, slender, like dark gray skin, this horrible like Joker esque grin just kind of like frozen on his face as the light leaves uh his eyes. He falls forward to the ground and there is this flash of light that goes at about like ten or fifteen feet in all directions, and his body, uh clothes, cloak, everything just <laughs> burns up in this light, uh leaving pile of ash on the floor in front of you. Damien is going to go over to the cage that the goblin is in and try to get them out. Okay. Uh, she looks... She's in shock at uh, what has just happened because this uh, horrible torturer man, the, the mask man, uh, has just been murdered by something she can't see and has burned into ash on the ground in front of her. Um, the, the cages are, it's just a, like a standard padlock on the front. Uh, we're gonna need some, I'm gonna need some help opening up this lock. Don't worry. We're, we're here to help. I've got Don't this. Scream Law, anything. reverse this thing. Reverse? Go. What, what thing? If it can turn people into masks, it can unturn people into masks. Reverse it. She goes and tries to open the lock. Okay. Uh, yeah, just with your thieves tools it's it's not difficult 25 oh yeah it, that was it even locked you're not unsure uh the padlock pops open um and the goblin uh kind of makes her way out into the room and then she runs over and picks up the uh the mask off the ground and just she's like she's in complete shock like just is just looking at all of you like not knowing what to do and she picked up the mask that was made when we walked in, right? Yes, yeah. Okay. And... Um, so I going to cast Dispel Magic on it? I have that prepared. That's about all I got. Okay. Uh, Let's we'll see if that works. Uh, make me a roll with your, with your spellcasting modifier. Prominos on my dice. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Domino. Excuse, excuse me, ma'am. I need these, oh baby. Gosh. I'm so sorry. I know. I need these, though. So. Okay, thank sorry. Damn. <laughs> uh that is going to be an 18. Okay. Um, you cast a spell magic. Uh, and you see the spell sort of uh coalesce, this like magic energy coalesce around the mask. Um and it kind of shimmers very briefly and it kind of like, it looks like it's expanding a little bit and, and then shrinking back down and expanding a little bit and shrinking back down like it is trying to transform back, um, but ultimately it's just not quite enough. Okay, let's, can, can we just for one second figure out what's going on here before we start 
doing a bunch of shit again? Well, looks like this guy was using this room to turn goblins uh, into these things. What's your name? Me? Yes. I, I'm I'm Vic. Uh, that's Binky. Binky. It's nice to meet you, Vic. And Law. Damien. Soraya. Giselle's around here somewhere. Uh, and we're here to help? Okay. What was he doing? H who? The... Wh whoever just died. Uh... Uh, I, I don't know. Um, he's in charge of the contraption, the machine, I guess. Um, when you get on Endelin's bad side, um, you never really know what's going to happen or where you're going to end up. And unfortunately, uh, Binky and I ended up here. Right. So you got in trouble, they brought you here, and they were doing something to you, but you don't know what it was. Apparently turning us into masks. Do you mind if I hold the mask for a second so I can figure out what happened to Binky? Uh, okay. And see if we can fix it. Yeah, she hands it to you. Thank you. Uh, I will use. I will cast identify in order to save time. I'll go ahead and use my um, my ritual spell ability to cast a ritual spell with a normal as a normal spell, so I don't spend the spell slot. Uh, okay. Uh. Yeah, you, you cast Identify. Um, there is, because he's technically a creature, um, you would know if there's any spells or anything affecting him. It's just uh, essentially a uh, sort of a warped... It's, it reads very similarly to you as like some kind of polymorph spell, oh. um, but there's something off about it. Like There's something that, that is... Uh, warped or like there's something that this uh, machinery has done to make it more permanent um, and to transform them into uh, objects instead of another living creature but it functions essentially the same way so this was the intent it seems like this was intentional like it, yes this is some sort of like chaos magic that they were just seeing like what happened no well and then just as a as a reminder because it was a lot of description i gave you the shelf in the corner as well as the walls is Covered it's all masks. masks it's all yeah. creepy wooden goblin masks in here it's like right. a bad majora's mask knock <laughs> But I get the impression that if it's similar to a polymorph spell, that if the spell can be ended, then the creatures would be okay, potentially. Yeah, as far as you can tell. And you did see, so when Soraya cast that spell, like you did, it did have some effect. Um, uh -huh. I just probably didn't roll high enough just to get it. To just, yeah. just wasn't yeah. quite enough. Um, okay. I understand that everybody's a little... That was pretty fucked up, we just saw. I can potentially do something with this, but it's probably going to take a lot of time to, like, try to reverse the polarity of these things and to undo the these all these people. So I don't know if that's the best use of our time right now. If we fix this, I can come back and do it. I don't see why this wouldn't be here if we deal with... Uh, the... the which lady? I already forgot her name. Endelin. Well, she, oh, that's right, Endelin. Well, she probably has something, or there's probably someone in here who knows how to reverse it. My guess would be that if this this is a pretty high complexity artifice that has been created, she, we know that she's been utilizing um, uh, architect. the Brigand Rock Architect. Somebody else probably built it for her. Uh, remind me, last time, did we find him? Was he the one that was in the base <laughs> basement that we left down there? Um, okay. And that's probably what they're using all the lightning for, is to power uh, up stuff like this. Yeah, and I, I'm sort of gathering that may, this probably isn't the crowning jewel, like the thing that all the lightning's being used for. There's probably a lot of devices like this throughout here. But the lightning's not going anywhere. Assuming... Well, we kill her, there's a storm end, do all these... 
Well, let's I not mean, kill her. We could just in probably case. find another way to power it. Either I way, can call lightning if we need lightning. Yeah. To power it. We have options, but I, if we start running into every room, murdering and panicking and stuff, we're just going to waste our energy before we get to her. Who said I did that out of panic? I didn't. It seemed very intentional to me. No, I'm just mean like we need to focus on what we have planned. I'm not going. To, I can spend a couple hours trying to do this, but I don't know if that's the best use of our time right now. Okay. If you can't do it, you can't do it. Let's move on. I'm not saying I can't. I'm just. All right. I can try to do the mask again before we leave, so we could at least fix Binky. We could try it one more time. But we should really get going and try to look, especially if someone comes looking into this room. Where are we going to take Vic? Well, we could point Vic to the tunnels where we came out of. There's a lot of people in between here and there. Uh, yeah. And the person that was supposed to be in charge of this room is dead right now, so anything this is probably the safest place for her we could always lock the door yeah uh, okay i'll stay here just stay here we'll lock the door is there anything she could use to, like barricade it from the inside uh there's the bookshelves if you can maybe try to push some things in front of it just in case somebody has a key oh, i'll try when when we come back, I'll send you a message to so get this in your head and know that it's us. Uh, okay. Um, I want to look through like the little pile of like dust that was the form of person to see if there's like any like keys or anything in that pile. Well, it just so happens <gasps> that you've been gifted a loot drop. <gasps> <laughs> Oh. Uh, so somebody roll me a d10. I mean, that seems appropriate if yeah. Damien's getting all dirty all right. in the darkling muck. Dust. Okay. okay. Darkling dust. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. That's exactly where my head went as well. That's very good. Trouble. You call D D D a four. D W. Okay. Roll me a d100. Uh, uh, Let's get pictures. Uh, here it is. Uh, that is a 45. Okay, give me just one second here. Okay. Six. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh boy, I don't like that laugh. You pull out a scroll. Oh. Hey, right, look at this scroll. Look it over. Hmm. That stuff, stuff from it. Hey, Law, can you check this out? Definitely. I'll take a look at it. Um, the identifier. Can I do an Arcana? Uh, you can do an Arcana check. 21. Yep, this is a spell scroll. Um, I don't... What levels of spell slots do you have? Me? Yeah. Uh, I have up to 6th level. Okay, uh, so this is a spell you recognize, because you could cast it from your wizard list. It's a spell scroll of Magic Jar. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, that is perfectly timed. Damien, can I has, please? Sure, I mean, I don't know. Can I, use, has, can I don't I know what anyone would want a magic jar for. Can I, I mean, has magic it, jar? Which can is it like, just can or, I has does magic it like, jar? Does it like keep keep stuff fresh? Just a real buck wild spell. Uh, it, in, a, in, a, in a sense, it'll keep things real fresh. Uh, I'm, yeah. Well, if I have any leftover food, I'm going to come to you. And he gives <laughs> the scroll. <laughs> I'm gonna 
that when I have the chance, I'm going to learn this spell. That's such a buckwild spell. I'm going to do some fucked up shit with this spell. Yeah, if you guys are so familiar, right now. Magic Jar is the one where you can uh, put your soul in a jar and then you can, <laughs> you can possess somebody. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going. I I am no longer tied to my corporeal form. Nope. I have ascended. <laughs> this is, this is how you get full. Need. This is how you get Full Metal Alchemists. You want Full Metal Alchemists? This is, this is, <laughs> um, I mean, law is already halfway there, so you know we just need a suit of armor now. I'm gonna possess so many people. Okay, uh, so you guys leave Vic and the Goblin formerly known as Binky. Is it like an outside lock on the door? Or is it like an inside lock on the thing? Uh, it locks from the inside. Okay. Um, so she can lock the door as you guys venture back out into spiral staircase, right? The hallway. Yeah. yeah. If you're gonna we should probably get Willoughby first. Yeah, we should. I'll I'll head back to uh, grab Willoughby. Like I'll zoomies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Willoughby, Damien comes to get you. Oh, hey. Hey, uh, we gotta get going. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, bye, everybody. And he rattles off everybody in the room's name. <laughs> of course, of he does. course he does. These are your new friends. Yeah. Uh, I have their names written down. You say goodbye to your new friends, Klee, Elegy, Puff, Elemic, and Diamanda. Oh, that names. one's metal. <laughs> Head back with Willoughby. Yeah, I'm reading the spell again. It is such a Captain Ginyu spell. It's Sorry, really I, insane. I'm, I'm just... <laughs> I, I just have. I'll, I'll talk about my memories of that spell. Uh, and with that, I think that's a good time for us to go ahead and take our break. Now that you're all reunited. Um, yeah. So thanks everybody for uh, hanging out with us so far. We will be back in just a quick few minutes. Uh, so grab a snack, make some more coffee, and um, do, do a big stretch. That shit feels good. And we will see you uh, in a brief few minutes. So stick around. And welcome back, internet. Thanks for hanging out with us during our break. We are refreshed and we got drinks and snacks and we are ready to continue on. Uh, you all meet up again at the base of this spiral staircase, which heads up to a higher level of the tower. Uh, Damien returns with Willoughby in tow. And you all start to make your way upstairs. Okay. Creeping uh, up the spiral staircase. Yeah, you... What could go wrong? You Glancing like up. between the rest of them, like, are we gonna tell Willoughby about what we saw? Look at him, he's so pure <laughs> and innocent right now. <laughs> I don't think I wanna ruin that little cloud. <laughs> just just let's just let him be. I met so many. We all look shell shocked. Just like, <laughs> well, he's just like completely <laughs> oblivious. I met so many new friends today. Everyone else is a little pale. Huh. Uh, Boy, we all got to get back out into the sun. I feel like I feel a beach episode coming on. Uh huh. I Maybe. would love a beach vacation. <clears throat> uh, you make your way up the spiral staircase uh, and uh, up to a new level uh, of this uh, this tower on this side of Motherhorn. Uh, it comes up and there's a uh, a little bit of a hallway, like a, a landing, um, if you will, here that goes out into another hallway. Um, the stairs do also continue up to a third floor. Let's check this one uh, first. I was talking to 
some of the performers and there was one that had previously been imprisoned at one point and apparently somewhere up here there's a room where it's like so soundproof that you start to like go a little bit mad and um yeah so it sounds like there's like different prisons and everything throughout here so i feel like we're gonna need to do like a sweep post hag schnoz punch i i agree yeah i think we have a lot of things to undo here yeah mm. there's they they do some pretty um stuff here mm. like especially when you say the room is soundproof oh looks even more grim than he already is because <laughs> he's like putting two and two together in his head <laughs> you guys want to check out this level yeah 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 and the stairs again posted it for you um are kind of centrally located on this floor of the tower um you come out this it's just like 10 feet or so out into a hallway um to your right uh, there is, I gotta go through my notes here, make sure I'm in the right place. Yeah, uh, so to your right, um, you see a large set of stone, like a large stone door. Um, on either side of the door, there are two, uh, like goblin sized suits of armor, kind of rusted, um, kind of flanking, and they're holding, uh, halberds, uh, flanking this, like, large stone door. Um, from your left, uh, down the hallway, you can, he you see, like, uh, like, flashes of light, almost like lightning going off, uh, down in this, uh, this other chamber, um, and you hear this, like, loud, it's, like, clicking, uh, sounds and, like, the, sort of, like, the, uh, the sounds of machinery, essentially, coming from, from the other side. <laughs> you go right to the door left to the noise left and to there's the noise. An, noise there's no doorway <laughs> like where no, there's no noise okay. i choose noise call us the noise boys <laughs> okay uh you turn to your left again it's not far it's like it's, well, i don't know 10 20 feet that way um and as you you head towards this noise it's very loud um you peek into this room and it is this huge uh cylindrical chamber uh it's in the center um you guys can kind of see a little bit of it on the map there uh it houses a this huge uh like whirring contraption that is spinning uh that is bolted to a revolving metal disc uh, that sort of serves as its base. Um, there are metal spheres and sickles that are attached to the ends of these long metal arms that kind of sweep back and forth around the room, like clicking loudly and rhythm rhythmically, um, like almost like a giant metronome, kind of. Uh, the whole apparatus is massive, um, and there are inlays that you can see even from here um, of uh, it, letters and like characters from alphabets you don't recognize um and uh as the contraption revolves uh there are these like little wisps of like smoke and light that kind of rise from the contraption in the shape of those characters and those letters like runes um as it sort of continues to spin and it hums it's, la it's loud in here it's just loud in here um everything is sort of like crackling with lightning i mean in the center of the mechanism, there is a huge copper pole, uh, like a big lightning rod. It goes about 80 feet up, tall, um, made of these different like pieces of lightning rods sort of stacked on top of each other, attached end to end. Um, and it extends upward uh, past a second level that has sort of a balcony ringed around it and then out through a hole in the ceiling. It's a crazy contraption. Uh, and then you can see kind of on the other side, three more goblins. Um, they are wearing uh, like overalls and these big like got like tinted goggles, um, presumably to protect their eyes from all the flashing light and lightnings. Um, and they've just got a couple of brooms and they're just sweeping the floor. Got 
Can I understand the purpose of this machine? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Yeah, roll me mm, some some kind of check. Some kind of check. Uh, roll a check. Well, Pick a check, any check. History. Uh, let's just do investigation. While Law is studying this, Willoughby whispers to Damien, It's like a brainy action, like a crazy contraption. The fun is catching. <gasps> it's a mousetrap. <laughs> I'm going to need a nap after this one. I had to look up the lyrics to that commercial and I've never Googled <laughs> mousetrap commercial lyrics in my life. <laughs> I was, I, bet you I never was, thought you'd do. I, I don't know what I was mentally preparing myself for because like I was also considering something else I was going to have Damien do, but then that just threw me off. Thank you, Rob. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it was great. Um, when you said crazy I, contraption, it was like my winter soldier moment is. for the day. Memory unlocked. <laughs> it's been uh, well, I rolled a four, but that's a fifteen. Okay. Uh, uh, I think you have like a general sense, maybe, of how this works. Um, so the big lightning rod in the center is essentially catching lightning, as it is wont to do, and funneling it down in to power this machine. Uh, there's some kind of combination of magic and math that is making this work like you recognize some of these uh some of these runes or some of these sort of characters and the way they are laid out there's probably some kind of formula to them okay um but what exactly it's accomplishing i from here and just with like a cursory look i don't think you can tell i think you'd have to take some time to actually go in okay. and sort of uh, sift through and figure out how it works. Well, you said there's math involved. So Law is immediately interested. Uh, yeah, magic. And I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> nope. It's just weird that Van said magic and magic twice. Yeah, crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. There's like so much magic. There's so much um, magic. Wizard text. I mean, jeez. Yeah, uh, I think I'll just says, I really want to stay here and figure this out, but I don't know how that helps us right now. So will somebody remind me that this is here when we're done? Dang. Put a pin in it. Um, those the you said there was like runes, like you said there was like some kind of runes on the wall. Also, they're all on the machine. Oh, okay, all right. Like you said, like um, do they look like any kind of language we definitely don't recognize? Nope. All right. <clears throat> so big open room. Is there anything above it? Uh, yeah, so the, if the, I peak. <laughs> yeah, so Without the, walking into the lightning filled room, <laughs> <laughs> you can do this. Uh, okay. the, the water genasi. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably no! extra electrifiable. Super <laughs> person that should be walking Super into this room. <laughs> yeah. So in this room, so again, it's, it's wild. It's like, um, I, the, I mean, the best thing I can compare it to is like mousetrap, like mousetrap, <laughs> or like that mousetrap. weird shit you get in Skyrim when you go like real deep in the dwarven runes, and there's like crazy machines uh, and stuff down there. It's like yeah. that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's very much like that. So yeah, this the central lightning rod goes up oh, about no, eighty magic. feet and out through the ceiling. Um, as you kind of follow it up, you look around the room a little bit. There are other doorways in this room. Um, to your right, uh, there's another opening that leads down a hallway. Uh, to your left, there is a hallway uh, as well that leads down. I don't know if you can see the door from here, but you guys can see it on the map. There's a door. And then across from you, uh, there are two alcoves that also have doors in them that seem to go out. Uh, and above you... Uh, oh, no, I don't think you have to roll for this. Um, there is... Uh, Essentially, this chamber goes all the way up, so you can see uh, part of the level of the tower that is above this one. You know the stairs go up at least one more time. Um, and the, the center of the, the chamber is open, but there is sort of like a viewing platform, like a balcony, uh, that goes around it. 
and you see on one side of it, uh, standing oh, no. there. Oh no! Uh, I've made one, a mistake. One figure uh, with a notebook in hand, um, sort of uh, writing something down furiously, taking notes. Um, you cannot see what they look like, but you can get like a general outline um, in like the lightning flashes and everything. This uh, some figure wearing a uh, like a large, almost almost like Victorian style dress, like a huge uh, skirt and then like smaller up top and a veil that is sort of covering their face. Um, across from them, you can't hear what they're saying because the the machinery is so loud in here, but you can see two other figures talking to each other. Uh, sort of conspiratorially, cons- conspiratorially, say that word fucking five times fast. No. They're conspiring together. They're in cahoots. They're they're uh, chatting um, and trying to, and like leaning in so they can be heard over the machine. Two faces you recognize of Bavlorn of Blightstraw and Scabbath of Nightshade. Our best friends. Um, but they are not looking down currently. They're talking to each other, and there's no way they can hear you over the machinery. I really want to yell up, be like, hello, hi. Oh, hey, it's been... What would you like to do? Hide. Duck uh, back into the hallway? Yeah, I... Yeah. Just pull everybody back. Yeah. <laughs> So they won't Whoa. they won't be able to hear you over this machinery. It's it's extremely loud. Um, we don't want to be seen. We are conspicuous. So this yeah, do not perceive. Grab everyone, pull them back into the hallway uh, where you entered from. Um, our two best hag friends are up there, and there's also a third figure. I don't want to assume that all three of them are up there, but it's looking pretty likely. Oh, I can finally oh show you guys what she looks like. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. I'm so scared. Is she so hot? What if she's oh, just no. like smoking hot? Yeah, I'll, I don't know. I really I'm hope so. What if it's so. just like Angelina Jolie as Maleficent? Yeah. What if she, what if she just posts <laughs> like a, a picture of Angelina Jolie? Bombshell. <laughs> all you can all you can see is really uh, her clothing right now. But yeah, she has this huge black uh, skirt, um, and uh, it kind of she's like veiled. <laughs> she's got this dark the veil over her face. Uh, and you know, well, not hearing bits. anything that says she isn't hot. Oh, no, there we go. Never mind. And uh, oh, that's so uh, bad ass. So spooky. Yeah. There's more There's, arms than I there expected. There's so many arms. Yes, Nothing that is makes me so bad ass. Uh, is than you wait, are those, those are those people? legs are part of the dress? Yeah. Oh. Or both. Hard to say. You can't see her oh. feet. Um, her skirt sort of comes to these points, almost like spider legs, uh, around her. Leg dress. That leg is dress, so dope. Dress. Okay. Cool. Now you guys see what I was talking about? Fashion icon. As soon as I saw her, I was like, oh, fuck yes, dude. I'm trying to get from the perspective. Does she have like a little like stage in her body or is she holding something in front of her? Hard to say. You're yes. Too, too far away. Yeah. The answer is yes. You'd have to get closer to find out. That I see the little so puppet dope. string things, mm-hmm. but yeah. Yeah, hard to say. So, the design of this is so cool. Yeah. yeah I'll, uh, design. For the folks out there, I'll, I'll post her in the Discord later in our in our show's channel so you can see uh, who you presume to be Endolin Moongrave. So you're all in the hallway. Safe for now. What would you like to do? Okay, so can't go through there. Could go up the staircase, confront all three of them. Or we all hop on the carpet and just zoom up and just ambush. Mm. I mean, Either also, way, I kind of want to have a conversation with them first. Mm, let them do like a villain monologue. I do want to hear their monologue. Lull them together. into a false sense of security. Ooh, they I all hate say, each other. Yeah. 
I guess it's not a monologue if there's three of them. Speak to you. you guys do have an audience with her that you can cash in. We That's do. That's true. We do. From the play. Do we know... Like, what were we supposed to do for that? Just, like, wait until somebody came to talk to us? Uh, it's not Chucklehead. What's his name? The Goblin. Stage, uh, stage uh, Fright. Uh, stage Fright. He said he would be back to get you. Could just go back and wait for our audience. Since we know all three yeah. of them are definitely here now. And that we're prepared. Really yeah, we can at least prepare that, like, you know, we, we know what to expect, basically. Or, or at least we could presume. We really can't do anything else if if they are here. Like all three of them are in that room. I mean, you guys are you guys are can try to sneak through if you want. Go in any of those other doors. You've got the the one set of doors in the hallway now. Stairs that go up, or you can go go back and leave that for another time. It's up to you guys. The stairs the stairs that go up we're gathering are going to bring us like right to them. Like that's yeah. that's going to bring us. So. Yeah, they go they go they spiral straight up. Uh, from where you are now, so it's basically going to bring you uh, if they go up one more floor uh, basically like right off of the, the balcony that ever, that the three of them are standing on. So unless I turn everyone else invisible, there's not and even then, they might see us. Yeah, and they can see through invisibility also. Yeah, didn't we, we confirm? Wasn't it our last one. fight? We, yeah, we the knew second that one. Yeah. She could see him as well. Yeah, okay. Scatha can see yeah. you. And so, if she can, I'm going to assume Endelin can. Mm -hmm. I think we've That's the, pretty we much established she's probably the most powerful of the bunch. And then, who knows? I'm trying to think what you guys know about what? her. Uh, yeah. You know, you know, she's the youngest. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she's way into theater. Yeah. I don't think you guys know. Can I, some would say, based on this picture, the theater is in her. Damn, can I sense fine. her power level from here? Other than, <laughs> no, you can't sense her power level. Um, she's can I make though. a dragon radar to figure out her power? She's level. way in a the theater. Uh, <laughs> or not dragon radar. Uh, uh, um, um, actually, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't. You know what? Fuck off, Rob. <laughs> you know what I meant. <laughs> a well, scouter. Goddamn. Okay, I've got there. There you go. What would you guys the, uh, like to do? Caffeine's wearing off. Boy. Um, Already? Yeah. Time to pound one of the vodkas. <laughs> Time to pound a Celsius. And a seltzer. And a seltzer. I will go mix a Celsius, a Celsius and a seltzer if you will. And uh, shotgun that on stream. I'll like double shotgun that on stream. Uh, if we don't. get it's only 500 new. likes. We have a lot uh, of stuff left to do today. Um, <laughs> what do you guys want to do? We may have to go back and beat. I'm I think so. I think we, unbeknownst to them, we do have the upper hand in a sense that we know all three of them are here. So it's going to be real hard to put one over on old Spaghetti After Dark. Mm-hmm. They can't fool us. But, I mean, they probably could. You got to get up pretty early in the morning, and even if you do, one mm -hmm. of them can't see you. Mm -hmm. So we have the advantage, but I think we should go back and wait. But we have, yeah, we, we could just use this information that we know to our advantage. Right. And who knows? Maybe they'll, you know, let us um, wait long enough to mechanically uh, rest and reconfigure our inventory. But at least we know this tower is here with that contraption in there yeah yeah um which uh law there's the answer to uh what the lightning's doing i imagine or at least like I mean, it seems like some sort of generator like this might be what's read the is it the, the prophecy lightning. machine do you reckon that'd be pretty wild that but... would explain why all three of them are in that room because if it was just a normal piece of machinery why would all three of them be there Unless they were baking a cake. 
Not not up there. I just mean like why no, else would no, you? No, you're right. No, you're mm. right. No, you're absolutely right. No, they they could be using the power from the machine reach a power kind of spell to bake a cake. I'm not going to debunk that. That I'm is something you, I would do too. going to be a giant mech. We're going to start fighting her. We're, she's going to get real low. We're going to hit her phase two, and suddenly the whole cast is going to turn into. That is mech. why we should go back and wait for them. That's why it's called the mother horn. Exactly. That's the name of the mech. I just I don't want the ambush. Yeah, we should go. We should, have, we should go back. I just want her back. to have the opportunity yeah, to prepare back. that if she does <laughs> have that back. ready, because I'd rather die in combat as long as I can see that happen. That is how I want to die. Will it be works on a prophecy for love? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, we can go back. Yeah. So nothing else on this floor. You just have that one set of stone doors. If you're not going to go out into the the lightning room. I'm going to just put my ear up against the stone door if I can. And just like see if I can hear anything beyond it. Okay. You touch it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you touch the door and the surface of it starts to swirl and shift. And appearing on it is a huge uh, skeletal face um, that uh, shouts at you. Uh, as it opens its mouth, uh, it starts to shout, uh, you will not pass uh, back, I command you, but very briefly as the mouth opens, it's as if the stone itself is opening and you can see briefly into the room beyond. And it looks like a prison before it snaps shut again. Alien holds up his hands and backs away back into the hallway to the others. So there's a prison over there, but as soon as I shut the door, this gigantic skull was like, you cannot go here. And <laughs> it's like 10 feet from your friends. You're just in this hallway. Yeah. <laughs> Are none of you looking at the maps I'm posting? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, no, we, 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 yeah. I have it pulled up. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you guys it's... went around the corner or not. Okay, so it, we, it we, opened. we saw Damien, we heard. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, the mouth opened and it, there's a hole. Yeah, you could yeah. like yeah. briefly see yeah. inside, inside of it. How big was the hole? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Let's see. The doors are. It was a probably, hole is a hole. <laughs> probably three feet. <laughs> oh, how interesting. Um, Just yeet the cat through it. <laughs> that's literally what I was thinking. <laughs> Can we get it to yell at us again? And I will wild shape into a cat and hop through. That could work. Burn my last wild shape. All right, I'll I'll head over to the cat. I'll you want to save your cat? wild shape. I can just teleport you through. But yeah, but that's a spell slot. I have more of those than your wild shapes. You know, weird flex, but okay. <laughs> no, it's not a flex. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. You know what? Law's out. Sorry. Law's done. <laughs> Bye, everyone. I'm going to go hang out with my new three best friends I'm upstairs. So I'm about to become the fourth hack in this <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, that's oh, funny. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, I don't have polymorph prepared either, so... I don't know. We could reduce someone. That we could do that. I've got that. Let me see if I... Got lots of ways to get through. I mean, will be whether we want it's like yeah, we... it's like three feet by three feet. Like. Yeah, yeah. Can uh, I eat Willoughby through the Willoughby hole? Willoughby can fit. Easily. Oh wow! I mean, you guys could all fit in theory. The human to... cannonball, the Allen cannonball, dive through, but it's only open for for a second. It just, I think. If we do this, if there's a prison inside, what are we gonna do with the prisoners? Before yeah, we, can you open the door for me? There's oh, yeah, no sure. idea. Yeah. I think well, we when you said prison, like inside, like we like we saw like jail cell doors, kind of thing. Uh, yeah, except they're not uh they're not bars. They're like full like iron doors with like a okay. little window at the top. 
Okay. Okay. So even if we did get Willoughby through, we wouldn't be able to do anything on the other side. I mean, you guys just don't know is the thing. Yeah. But even if like, even if we uh, release everyone, we just got to sneak them and then we're going to have to sneak them all out of here past and like, where we begin the stuff. uprising. Yeah. You still want to put them in harm's way until I, I feel like we can handle the hags and then come free them afterwards. Mm-hmm. But also we know that they're here and we can, I, when I, when we uh, give the go word for our army downstairs, we can tell them where they are. And that's true. And they can, go rescue them. We could send off yeah, we could send people up here to come and get them. While we cause a distraction to keep Endolin and her sisters busy. Just saying, if we don't want anyone to get hurt, that might be the best option. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I mean, we could use this as the distraction now. Just trying to think of a creative way to get into this person and my brain isn't working yeah i mean i i can we could also just go to our audience with the hag and see what happens I, I think we've got so many ways to get inside we can definitely do that it's just like once we get inside and let these people free then what yeah then, then what do we do with them because they're mm-hmm. just gonna be i don't imagine they're all well armed and in good condition to fight we can just tell the people when they come in to start when we're starting all this to come up here and unless, release these people. Unless Tosh is mm-hmm. in there. You never know. We don't we don't know who's in there. So I, I say I think we should take this information that we have and use it for when we the whole all of this goes pops off. And we yeah. we let our like backup know like, hey, they're up here. Free them and see if you can arm them with anything that we can. Yeah, I can let uh the oh fuck, what did I name my squad? I forgot the name. I deleted the note that had all the stuff on it. Like an idiot. Remember. Also, uh, Will be brings up another good point. We could take maybe take the opportunity to rest while we're down there. Yeah, prep for what's probably going to be a doozy of a fight. I'm fine with that. I will remind you. I can stock my battle spells. That stage right said he'd be back in about an hour. Yeah. (gasps) I can uh, can give up to three of us a short rest. Uh, I have catnap uh, Hmm. prepared. Hmm. I'll just druid circle yeah. in the middle of this. Let's take a long rest. <laughs> just <laughs> druid circle in the middle of the stage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I can give three people a short rest in ten minutes. Um, so we could, we could wait, take advantage of the rest, but we keep this information that we have. Is I think we yeah. is my is my suggestion of a plan. All you guys we know, saw were cell doors. You yeah. Don't know yep. what's in there or who's in there? Yeah. If anyone's yeah. in there at all. Hmm. Okay. Well, if we're going to be taking a short rest, then you get your wild chase back on a short rest, right, right Rage? Uh, I think so. Um, yes. Do you do you want to just pop in in cat form and see who's in there? Yeah, why not? Yeah. I get him back if we short rest, so somebody yeah. open the mouth of this thing. <laughs> that was such a um, roundabout way of deciding... To, to do, do the, the thing. thing. Said. Well, we had we to talk there. it through. You know what? You put we a door there. in front of us, so it's gonna take a while for us to figure out. <laughs> and it's not. There. It's not. It's not. It's not the door. Look, we're a yeah. bunch of house cats looking at a closed do door, but riddles. there's like actually it's still it's slightly riddles. ajar where we could easily just put our weight up against it and open it. But you know, well, hey, what's well, gonna just <laughs> try a wild shapes? He's gonna walk up. He's like, do you know any riddles? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. No response. I no, go to the door and I touch it. Yeah, nothing happens. We walk away from, like back and forth. I'm seeing trying to trigger the automatic door sensor. 
time. You no, know, does this thing when you try to turn the light in or back down the hallway the and then towards the door. Uh huh. And I'm doing this thing, like just waving my arms. <laughs> Space. Oh, was the talking a one time thing? I guess it was. Someone else touch it. Whoopsie. Oh, knock yeah. On the door. Uh, Law, you knock on the door, and once again, the face appears. Go, go. Um, and the mouth opens wide to say, I back, I command you. And Soraya, you jump through as it shuts and the face disappears again. I'm in a prison. You're in a prison. Uh, let me tell you what you see in said prison. Uh, there are four cells uh, that are sealed by these big stone doors uh, branching off from essentially an empty, an empty chamber that you are standing in. Um, on the wall nearby, there is this set of uh, levers, four of them. Uh, each one of the cell doors has a small window set into it. Um, so in theory, you could see inside if you could get up to it. <laughs> I'm agile. <laughs> you just do a big jump. <laughs> big jump. Uh, yeah, I won't belabor the point. So three of the cells are unoccupied. Uh, the fourth has a prisoner within. Um, you see uh, curled up on a divan, uh, reading a book, uh, sipping some wine from a thin crystal goblet is an elven woman uh, who looks extremely familiar to you um, because she is identical to another elf you met recently, except for the mask she wears, which is in the shape of a sun. The, the sister, found the sister. Nice. I thought it was gonna be Tosh for a second. Damn. That would have been crazy. That would have been crazy. Not, no, Gleam was the one we met, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Glimmer? This is a Glimmer. Okay. You can assume. I don't feel bad just confirming that she's, she looks the same and she's wearing the same mask except it's a sun instead of a moon. That's not a far leap in logic, I think. Yeah. I wish more games did naming themes because it makes it so easy, for, so much easier for me to, to remember. remember NPCs' names. As soon as you said Glimmer and Gleam, awesome. They go I together. That now. They go together. Uh, but yeah, she's, she's curled up on this divan. She's reading um, a book. There's a sort of a decanter of wine, a bowl of figs on a small table, there's a big tapestry on the back wall. Um, so by all accounts, it's pretty nice as far as a prison is concerned. Um, I walk over in front of the, <laughs> in front of her, uh, her, not cage. I don't know why my brain said cage. Prison cell? Cell. Cell's the word I needed, not cage. Uh, They're similar. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, and... I don't really want to unwild shape because I've got to hop back to the store. So I guess I just meow at her. <laughs> meow. Okay. Uh, you meow. <laughs> Get her attention. <laughs> There's no response. Boo. Uh, what can I do in that situation? Does it does it seem like there's like magic like blocking the cell like she can't hear me or can't see me or just doesn't care about cats? Uh, it seems like she just can't hear you. Hmm. And then you're small, so you I mean you'd have to really make an effort to get back up to the window again. Hmm. Which, in theory, the glass is, like, inset into the door, so there'd be, like, a little bit of a ledge that you could have jumped up on. I will try to jump back up there, then, I guess. Yeah, you can hop back up there. Uh, it's your cat. It's easy enough. Uh, and I look see Domino do that shit all the time. <laughs> uh, yeah, you hop up on the sill. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> start pawing at the glass. <laughs> Um, it, it takes a moment. It doesn't seem like she hears you. Um, but as she goes to... Rubbing on the glass. <laughs> um, she goes to reach for the goblet on the table again. She looks up and she sees movement 
in the window and you see just this like look of confusion on her face. She shuts the book, she gets up and goes to the window. <laughs> Oh, God, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> I can't unwild shape because I, I will fall from here. <laughs> Probably. <That's right. laughs> uh, uh. I did not think this plan through at all. Ma'am, we're here to rescue you. And I can't... You said there were levers or something? Yeah, there's on, on one of the walls in this main room, there's a set of uh, of four levers just in the wall. Uh, you just like jump up and hang off the le the levers. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Can I just like hop on a lever and see what happens? Uh, yeah. I don't see why not. Um, um I was gonna say, what d does it appear that they would be like obviously like one, two, three, four? Uh, yeah. I mean, they're in a row, so. Okay, I'll hop on the one that I think is. Attached to hers. Yeah, try the the one on the end. Um, it's the one uh, closest to uh, her cell door. You hop down, and she's like watching you, like uh, <laughs> what the very, hell is this cat doing? very confused, <laughs> thinking probably thinking she's hallucinating, um, and watches you as you uh, pad over to the levers. You're gonna take a big leap uh, and hop. It's not it's not too <laughs> high up, and you hop up and kind of. Uh, like a cat trying to sit on the back of a chair, but the back of the chair is too narrow. And so it's like, eh, <laughs> like holding on, kind of like hold on to the lever and like scoot out to the end of it. And it starts to <laughs> uh, you slide off onto the floor, jump off. Uh, and there is a uh, another clicking and like thunking sound uh, and her cell door swings open. Triumphant meow. Oh. <laughs> You're a smart little thing. How did you get in here? Uh, she kind of switches her tail at the door. I see. You have friends out there then. Meow. Excellent. I thought I was hallucinating you. Meow. Well, uh, it's good kitty. Thank you. Uh, you see her make her way over to the... Uh, the prison door and she kind of puts her hands on it. She's looking for it. There's no lock. There's no handle. Well. Any ideas? Soraya on wild shapes. I give up being a cat. Oh. <laughs> well, that makes a little more sense. Hi, sorry. Yeah, it's kind of hard Hi. to communicate as a cat, um, but I did my best. Sure, I, I thought you did pretty well um thank you hi, hi. i'm soraya um my friends are outside we've met your sister glimmer. gleam sent us i'm glimmer yes um great um yeah hi how how do we get out um yeah i'm still figuring that i didn't think this all the way through so the other four of you are just sort of standing in the hallway Wait, I, I'm beatboxing with uh, Willoughby because like we're just standing in the hallway because it's so loud we're just standing there idly so I'm just beatboxing with Willoughby uh, if the door is not more than a foot thick of stone is it made of stone? it is made of stone yeah uh, I'll try to send a message through Ooh, how thick is this door? How thick is this door? Can it's like short rest right now because then I can, ch I can <laughs> pretty just thick. need to change out my spells. Uh, I don't just kidding. think a message will get through. That was a thick door. All we do know is just that someone new has to touch the door to. I really wish opening. that I had. So, um. Mm -hmm. Has Soraya touched so the door yet? It, no. Mm -mm. But we need it to open twice for us to get out. And she just touched it, and it didn't open. Mm -hmm. But probably because maybe because uh, she, the only she was a prisoner inside. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't think about how to time this. Is there? 
Would it's, any of it's, the other levers open the big door? There's yeah, there's no lever or anything around in here that opens the door. It's just magic door, right? Yeah, there are four levers. Um okay. those four prison cell doors, right? A load of prior save state. Um nope. Okay. Um for saves coming this. Let's go. Really wish that I had stone shape prepared. That would just solve all of my problems, maybe. So I've seen the way the door works. In theory, your your friends are outside? Yes. I mean I, I assume after a certain amount of time they'll want to know what's happened to you. Um I'm sure they'll try to open it again. The and I haven't touched it yet, so it might open and yell at me, but I don't know if that'll happen on the inside. Well, I suppose we could wait. Um, the, oh, there's well, there's not much in here, but there's a few chairs and things. We could try to wedge it open when it opens. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, uh, let's find something sturdy and we can try to wedge it open. Right. That'll give us enough space to slip through. We're both relatively little. All right. Uh, she goes back into her cell, is like looking around, kind of looks at the table, um, and then takes, uh, sort of leans down and grabs the edge of the divan, just like one of those long, like, lounging couches, like a fainting couch, um, mm -hmm. and it grabs onto one end of it and starts to pull it out of the cell. <laughs> I'll help. <laughs> Not strong, but we'll help. We can do it together. All right, we are ready. I'm going to touch the door on this side once we get it into position, like hefting this thing up with one hand, and I'm going to mm -hmm. try to touch the door with the other to see if it'll open from the inside and yell. Okay. Uh, yeah, you touch the door, Soraya. Um, the rest of you outside see the mouth open again as it starts to shout. And Soraya and Glimmer try and to shove see, this divan through. And you see at this, you hear at the same time, uh, <laughs> as Soraya and uh, an elven woman wearing a sun mask shove a, uh, a couch through the hole. And as the stone goes to close, it <clears throat> sticks. Yes. Whoa. High five, Glimmer. Yeah. <laughs> well, that escalated. You can like kind of crawl out yes. <laughs> through. I'll let side. her go first, uh, just in case it oh. snaps shut. Hello. Um. Once. Hi. <laughs> uh, hi. She's very thin. She can make it through. Hi. <laughs> uh, how's it going? Oh, is it? Well, better than it has been. Oh, it's right. She goes to help like so pull you through. Was pretty cool. <laughs> You have a sun mask. Uh, yes. We have a very, <gasps> Giant very moon. big moon. <gasps> oh, oh my Lanta. So you know uh, about the Strike prophecy then. Kicks the yeah. sun back through so that, you know, yeah, the stone no, will no evidence. Shut. <laughs> <laughs> no evidence we were no over here. No victims. <laughs> Yeah. That would just be like very so, telltale that we were here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just a giant couch through. just yeah. sticking through yeah, the door. Just, yeah, I'll just, I'll just, just walk by. That's not supposed to. So, be but you, you know of the, the prophecy, then. Uh huh. Uh huh. I've been reading, brainstorming, trying to think of a way to use that to my advantage. Um, that's, well, that's why I'm here. It's why she split us up in the first place. Split, split you up. Um, my sister and I. Sun and moon masks. Because she thought. Yeah. Oh. Well, that our eclipse. Queen is okay, right? Yeah. Yeah. She made friends. She's the queen. Mm -hmm. that, that sounds like her. She's always the more elegant of the two of us. Well, nice to meet you all. Um, I guess I'm. Glimmer, um, Glimmer Selenellian, you know my sister, and I'm very pleased that you're all here. <laughs> Though I did think I was hallucinating a cat for a bit. That happens sometimes. No, th yeah, that's that's kind of part of the course with us. Okay. Yeah, so, I do that sometimes. So just to give 
looks around to make sure like no one else can hear them. All right, so just to give you the pretty much the quick rundown, we're gonna cause a big old uprising. There's gonna be a bunch of robots and everything in here and about to wreck shit, and we're gonna punch Endel in the schnoz. Right. And then then what are you going to do? I don't know, maybe go Frieza maybe... Belna? Oh yeah, Frieza Belna. Um probably get a burger after that. Mm-hmm. You know, because I maybe haven't had a, a burger. Jabber walk. So you're going oh, to the yeah. house. Yeah. There's a way to get there from here. Oh, you, do you know? Because we also know a way. Um, I before I was in the cell. Um, I overheard a couple of the the, the little ones um, talking about it. Uh, there's a belfry in the tower, in the very top. Apparently, Endelin boarded it up to prevent anyone from getting to it. The reigning theory is that that bell can get you directly to the Palace of Heart's Desire. This is so Dark Souls. I love it. You'd have to get up there, but... I don't know what that is. <laughs> you, you like Dark Souls? Love Dark Souls. Do you like Dark Souls? I do. Immensely. If I ring that bell, are a bunch of demons going to come and pick me up and fly me there? I don't know how it works. I just I know, it's allegedly, it it's the fastest and safest way to get to Zybilna's palace. I hope a bunch of Do we really need to dispatch the hags before we go there? I mean, we if we could wake Zybilna up... And then they'd get really pissed that we rang the bell, and maybe they'd, you know, show up at Sibilna's for an epic showdown. I want Unless, to you know, fight the hag mech, though. But well, she might bring it. Yeah, you know, as a last straw kind of thing. Kind of like puts us in the reverse situation, you know, like us going to the big evil person, the big evil person comes to us because we're the big evil person ruining their plans, and they gather up their crew. It's kind of like a weird role of reversal when you think about it. I think we're going to be friends after this. Oh, cool. I hope so. Is there anything I can do to help? Hmm. Well, you want to hold on to this big moon? Just in case. I forgot you guys brought the moon. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a giant moon. Just Never this. leave home without it. it. It's a big plywood moon with like a horrible face painted on it. Just like rolling it down the hallway. Oh, okay, well that's certainly something. Terrifying. Um, I, I suppose. Uh, so what oh. are we going to do? Well, are there other prisoners? Or any other kind of prison floors like the one you're in? Not that I know of. Um, I know there's a few weird spots here and there, but as far as I know, this is the only prison and I'm the only one in it. Not anymore, thanks to you. But I want to help. We'll take all the help we can get. It yeah. sounds like we're going to have to enact a, a prophecy. But, yeah, I don't know if it's wisest to go for the tower first, or... Or try to defeat the hags here. Well, um, if history is any indication, they're just gonna regroup somewhere else unless we like fully murder them. So here the they're choice... on their home turf advantage, you know. Yeah. I mean, look, we we heard the Jabberwock likes to hang out by Zybulna's palace. Maybe we can enlist their help. Mm. <laughs> That's also true. I mean, we could. What we could do is we could go to the palace. And leave Glimmy here to kind of like start spreading the word that something big is going to go down. Or, well, okay, I know I'm not the idea person, but I just had one. This was new. So what if? <laughs> hold on. I had an idea. I had a thought for once. So hold on a second. <laughs> it's hold on, happening. To... Me... <laughs> Head <laughs> empty. So... Head no longer empty. I don't know what to do with this. This is character development. <laughs> so... Is this a thought? <laughs> is this what this feels like? This is so weird. Um, so what if we bring the giant moon and Glimmer with us 
And then the second that the hags show up after we've rung the bell and we get to the palace, we're just like, oh, look, Endelin, it's a fucking eclipse. And we do the eclipse thing and throw our ass off. <laughs> Whoa. Like instantly when they show up. While somebody runs Wittershins, you can't really do the Scabatha one, but, you know, just instantly throw off two of them. It is a way to, like, slow them down while we get to the bell. Yeah, oh, yeah, for that's sure. also a good idea in case they are trying to head us off at the bell to get yeah. to the palace. And it'll, you know, I'm sure they're plotting and, and coordinating their attack and whatnot, so it'll throw them off if we can... Oh, excuse me, I forgot how to breathe for a second. Um, <laughs> uh, it'll it'll throw them off if if we are able to, you know, get in Endelin's head about the the prophecy and and the night that she will come undone. And I'm just saying too, if we take them out here, where they're the strongest and most coordinated, then then we've proven ourselves like we get to see how strong they are and then if we when we kick their asses they'll know not to mess with us anymore it'll discourage them from further bullshit mm. or we go kick their ass once and for all over at a big epic castle and we free the lady that's like super powerful here at the same time plus dragon mhm mm want to see how strong they are I think they're pretty strong. So are we doing the audience thing or not? I don't care what we do. I just want to do something. Yeah. Um, we I'm down do for audience. A, we still do have that audience with her. We could just do the audience and see what happens. And if all else fails, we book for the bell. Yeah. We don't know mm -hmm. where it is, though. That's the yeah. other problem. Yeah, which... Glimmer, do you know which direction the belfry is at? Um, other than up... We well, if try we... to find the belfry, our hour is running out very quickly. I think I think we go back, get like a quick cat nap in, and then do this thing, do it good. And if we can find the belfry, we can get to it. If we can find the belfry in the process, we'll use it. Exactly. But if we go up towards the belfry, I almost guarantee they're going to have us all. Like they're, they've got some sort of warding or something up there. They're yeah, it's probably not just us. open. Yeah. I doubt we're just going to be able to waltz right up to it and use it. I feel like we got lucky this time with them being in the engine room area. Mm -hmm. So. All right, well, audience, it is. Audience. Mm -hmm. Yep. And what what would you like me to do? Stay close, I guess. But if we, she, she stays close with us, they may just somewhere. throw her back in the prison. I am a fugitive. Yeah. Has anyone seen you without the mask on? I, I mean, no. Or is it like a religious thing that you don't take it off? I, I, well, I mean, I take it off to sleep, but I, I mean, I. It only covers half my face. I'm not, you know. Uh. I, I don't know that I'm going to be able to pass myself off as someone else, especially since most everyone here is a goblin or a darkling. To drop her off with our goblin friend. We could do that, or we could, well, we'll still have to pass through the giant room to get to the tunnels. So I guess we could leave mm. it with a goblin. Did we have to go past any, a bunch of people to get to the uh, room with Vic? Uh, yeah, you had to go through the library. Gotcha. Can you just keep rescuing people and then leaving them where we rescued them and say, hey, wait for us here? <laughs> hey, wait for us here. It's like followers in Skyrim. Wait here for me. I'll come get you. Hold these 17 pickaxes and I'll just stand there for 20 <laughs> minutes. Uh, I mean, I don't see any other option unless we risk just taking her with us. Does anybody have something we can disguise her with? Like a I don't think extra... I do. Extra cloak or something. I know I'm going through my stuff and I don't really have any. I can turn her invisible for uh at least till we get her somewhere she can hide. We could do that, yeah. 
At least we can turn her invisible so we can walk through the library. Yeah, I'll just cast invisibility on her. Uh, probably my last second level spell slot. Uh, do you want to do that? I can use a charge on the... Mm, on the staff, staff too. Yeah. yeah. Might oh. want to save your staff charges. I have 50. It costs Oh, okay. Never two. mind. It's a lot. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot. Never mind. I forgot. Is... I forgot how OP that staff it's is. Really it's powerful. ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I mean, go if you want to do that. That's that's easier. Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, turn glimmer, invisible, and head back downstairs. Hopefully, before stage fright gets back. Anything on the way? Just get her getting there. back there as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, so you head back down the stairs uh, through the library uh, into prop storage and then down the hall into the dressing room and the performer's quarters. Um, how long does invisibility last? Hour. Okay. Uh, so that's plenty of time. You can drop it if you want. Uh, once we get back. Once but, we get her where she needs to go, yeah. Yeah, Glimmer will uh, uh, sort of tuck herself into one of the uh, the bedrooms with the curtains and the performer's quarters. Um, they are more more than willing and glad to, to hide her uh, down here. Um, yeah, you've got a few minutes. I'll do a little short rest. You got about 10 15 minutes uh i can do i can do if that i assuming that's not enough time for us to like actually take a short rest no uh, i can do catnap on three people uh who regain who will regain the most oh. from a short rest i'm i'm good i'm good because i have only thing i get back at short rest is my key points and i got them all back already i was assuming and i was assuming willoughby you probably don't get anything back on a short rest um, the only thing is the effect of Sanctuary on, well, I get some fighter stuff, but I haven't spent anything. Um, the effect on Helm of the Best Boy comes back where I get the effects of the Sanctuary spell. Have you broken it? Oh, have you made an attack? Did you break the... Nope. No. So, I don't that would... think... Oh, I thought it only lasts like eight hours, though. Uh, to look at the item. Uh, yeah. N yeah, it's not like I mean I'm just assuming just I have based on it, sanctuary. Yeah, um, my, I think the design for it that Van approved was just that after you finish a long rest, you've got oh it that I just you get make, it. You just have sanctuary until the first time you make an attack. Oh, yes. okay. I was basing the eight hours thing on sanctuary. No, maybe I, I think the base spell is yeah the. No, the base spell just... Oh, the base spell is only a minute. Where was I getting yeah. this eight hours bullshit? Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, you just have that until you make an attack. Tight. Um. So, yeah, I'll do it on the three of us because I'll get some spell slots back. Yeah, um, I'm I'm at full and, and all my resources are good, yeah, so I'm, I'm good. feel free to use it on folks that actually benefit from that. Okay. I yeah, would, it was only if we go, if we were if we were able to get a long rest, I was gonna like reconfigure some spells, but I don't think we're gotcha gonna be able to. No. Yeah, All I right. was just gonna go kill a bee. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'll cast catnap on uh, Law Sarah and Giselle. Uh, so it puts everyone, it puts the three of us to sleep. If we're if we stay unconscious for the duration, uh, you get the benefits of a short rest. Okay. Yeah, you got ten minutes. So I'll immediately get that third level spell slot back, and then I'll get back one of my seconds. Okay. Um, you take a little bit of a cat nap, uh, getting glimmer situated in here um, and about the time that ends. Uh, coming through the curtain, you see stage fright. He says, well, are you ready? 
Yep. Excellent. Cool boys. Then follow me. And he begins to lead you out of the room and towards an audience with Endolin Moongrave. Uh, and that is where we're going to have to call it for today. I'm so scared. I'm very excited that you guys are sticking around for this. So, uh, we'll get to that next time. Ooh. Excuse me. Uh, thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us. Let's do uh, let's do stars and wishes. And we still have a little bit of time. Who wants to go? I can go first. Stars to Willoughby for uh, adding to his friendship list, and also for fucking mouse trap which was memory unlocked for all of us, I believe. Um, wish. I just want us to be able to go back and be students one day. <laughs> It'd be nice for us to actually go to school at some point. Remember academia? Remember that? Remember when we were just like kids at college? And we like did a, a bar crawl? <laughs> a good day. <laughs> the golden yeah. years. Hey, that's me. Thank you, Sid. I'll go. I'll go. Um, my star goes <laughs> to. I I appreciate all the moments of strategizing in this session, but I think my favorite um, like line of reasoning was Law really just wanted to have a mech fight. And it was the most anime like, but but if I beat her here exactly. on her home turf, it'll demoralize her. <laughs> That's but exactly Willoughby what it was. Stuck cheese. <laughs> demoralizer. It'll demoralizer. But yeah, I I love the like the arrogance of like nah, like we need to we need to like shut her down shut them all down on their home turf and show them that we, like Wu-Tang ain't nothing to fuck with like <laughs> I love I, I just love it um, and wish uh, that we do in fact do that <laughs> no I like I, 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 I don't know I don't know that it's a giant mech necessarily it could be that'd be pretty metal um, but I do want to understand what all of the lightning and machinery and like I I gotta know I gotta know what like what lever is gonna get pulled and what bullshit is gonna happen like I'm so excited. So yeah, I'm glad you guys are excited because I love this. Show. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh that's my wish. Excellent. Thanks, Rob. I can Oops. go. Okay. Uh, my star <laughs> goes to Sid slash Giselle for the two episode thing of bringing this giant moon with us everywhere. <laughs> I just that visual to me is so funny. Um, of so us going just, like, to pay carding, off eventually, just carting this fucking thing around just makes me laugh so hard. Especially if like, are we gonna like bring this into this audience? I don't know. It's just it cracks me up. Like we're just like bringing this moon that we found in the prom closet around with us. Around. This is gonna come in handy. Just you see, and it just it's just I don't know. It's just cracking me up every every time it gets. Brought. I'm like, oh yeah, we still have that. I don't know why. It's like when you find that. a random object in a game and you're just like, yeah, I, I'm probably this will be need important. This, this is gonna I be important. I need it in my inventory for like the next however long, and we're just gonna use it eventually. It just it I, just cracks me up. <laughs> I love it. I really... it's, it's me in every video game. Mm, this is shiny. I'm just going to pick it up and carry it with me forever until I'm done with this game and I'm never going to use it. We're going to use this somehow. <clears throat> um, and that really cracks me up. Um, I really I want it. a moment where where Gleam shows up and we don't need the moon and Giselle's <laughs> just like, She's... fuck. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm just hanging it in my dorm room <laughs> when we get to go be students again. <laughs> just like I just, the commit, the committing to the the bit for the carrying this moon around has, just, has been cracking me up this whole time. So I'm just seeing Giselle just like carrying this giant thing. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and my wish is 
I want to either ring the spell to go somewhere or I want to hop in that fucking circle that y'all found and go somewhere. That's my wish. So I just oh, yeah, I want to be teleported somewhere. We know where the bell goes, but we don't know where the beacons would bring us. It would go just, anywhere, wherever we it want. Could, it could go yeah. anywhere, or That's, we might yeah. not be able to control it. If we're if all of us jump into it, we're all thinking of a different place. I want to. I kind of want to see. Oh, what that's happens. true. Right. Yeah. Oh, Season yeah. Three. Oh, yeah. That's an my... experiment with the magic portal. We don't know how it really works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know yeah. why. In my head, I'm like, crazy. you know, if all else fails, this sounds like this could be fun. Yeah. Um. So that's my wish: is experimenting with magic portals. Apparently. I like it. I like <laughs> it. <laughs> that's my wish. Excellent Since wishes all around there. so far. <laughs> and that's me. Thanks, Rachel. Who else? Uh, I'll do mine. Uh, I'm gonna give my star to uh, to Wally and Damien uh, for I don't know. We I felt like Damien and Law were like real same brain this uh, <laughs> this episode. You guys and had similar it, energy for it, sure. It, it, mm-hmm. it got a got a kick. I got a kick out of it. Um, and boy, do I want to just like fight some big mechs alongside Damien. That's that's my wish too. Uh, I know I've completely manifested this Big Mac idea, and I'm sure Van is very happy with me for doing that. I'm so uh, pleased and expecting that, and I'm fully ready to be disappointed and have Lobby at the end of the fight. It's like, why didn't you use your mech? And her be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Uh, so, uh, but also if it shows up and I can go like, oh my god, I was right. That would either way, it's gonna be funny. We'll see. All right. That's me. I realize I didn't say that. Yeah, I'm done. I was just like, like, oh, are you, is that it? I fully said that in my head. I was like, oh, I'm done. And it just didn't make it out of my mouth. Just Wally, oh, right? Yeah, it's me. It's, it's my like turn. Going th- I was like, who hasn't gone? Oh, wait, we just went down the line. It's me. It's me. Um, my star, it goes to Soraya and just cat antics. I appreciate cat, cat antics in any kind of game whatsoever. And when I see cat antics, it makes me happy. So, and it, it made it even better because you weren't a talking cat. You had to be a normal cat. So you had to like do everything non-verbally, but also you're a cat and very limited to cat stuff when you could have easily just wild shaped out, but no, you didn't. You stuck to the bit and I loved it. Um, my wish, I, I I really want this battle to happen. I, I, one half of me really wants us to once again not defeat the, not defeat them, but just fuck their shit up and then leave, like we've been doing every single time. Because now in my head, we pretty much enlisted ourselves as the equivalent of Saturday morning cartoon, like, like of like cartoon heroes to these like Saturday morning villains. Like they just put out a monster of the day every single time we show up, we wreck their shit and they leave. So it's more in them. They're like, if they just stayed for at least five more minutes after they did all of that, we probably could do something. So I'm very curious to see uh, after all of this now, because they're prepared for us. This is not like a thing where we're kind of like showing up on a whim. This is the first time while we're also been planning this out, we've they've one hundred percent been planning our demise, and the fact that they're all there, all three of them talking to each other when they're fully aware we are here, something is gonna happen, and I really want to see if it's gonna pop off at this like audience. So, yeah, that's my wish. Awesome, these are some fun wishes. I like them. Anything else? Nope, that's it. Well, we will call it there for today on time for once in my goddamn life. Uh, Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us today. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Thank you to my wonderful friends here for uh, doing this. It's always fun. It's always wonderful uh, for for me personally. Selfishly, I'm having a great time. And I hope you guys are too. Um, We'll be back... I I assume there's some scheduling stuff going on in the next few weeks. We might be back next Saturday. I have to actually look at my calendar, but I'm not going to do that right now. So it'll be a fun surprise 
when I announce it. Um, but we will be back soon uh, to play this game again. In the meantime, we've got other live streams. Join us tonight at 5 p.m. Eastern time for the next episode of Hearts of Stone, which is our uh, Blades in the Dark game that Val runs. Very excited to go back to Duskfall and do more crime. Uh, and then other streams throughout the week as well. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll see you next time. That's it for us this morning. Uh, until then... Good game, and I start building your mechs. Internet, you're gonna need them. <laughs> <laughs>